second offensive foray. And they are first down at their own 45 yard line. Play action utilizing Nemet and Quinlan is gonna go deep down the field. He has a man and oh. it's knocked away. Good play by Mark Durgan for Guelph as the pass was intended all the way downfield. It's great to see Kevin DeHollander back. He is a big deep threat, but if you watch, Kyle Quinlan lets this ball hang just a little bit. I don't wanna take anything away from Durgan because he makes a great play. Now he jumps, gets his arm fully extended right in between DeHollander's hands and knocks that ball to the ground. Great play. Durgan also has Ooh, four awesome. interceptions on the year. His flags fly everywhere on second and ten. Well, I, I had the opportunity to go up to Alumni Stadium at Guelph and uh, watch them against Western, or sorry, not Western, against Queens, and their secondary was having a field day picking Chapdelaine off. Offside. Pete, repeat, second down. So again, Matt goes back to that uh, Second down offside play, which gets them five yards and makes it second and five instead of second and ten. Best play in the playbook. Four receivers to the wide side of the field for the Marauder, Steve. And Quinlan with a toss to Nemet, and Nemet gets tripped up just beyond the line of scrimmage. Looks to be about a yard or two short of the first down, so good penetration well, by the golf defensive and, line. And, and Jordan Duncan came flying in from that halfback spot on a blitz, and he got Joey Nemet's feet before Joe could even get started. Boom, Max punting for the first time tonight. So Guelph will take some positives from that defensive stand as they stop McMaster on second and five. Great series for Guelph's defense. And Kropagna kicks the ball away and it's angled to the 20-yard line. And going nowhere on the return is Nick Anapolsky. Good coverage by McMaster downfield. Well, it's a great punt by Kropina, who's a true freshman in this program. This punt is beautiful. He sails that ball deep. Now look where the coverage guys are. There's contained, there's people all around him. Great tackle to limit the return. That's outstanding work by Max special teams. Alan Dix, first year defensive back in the tackle. No return and a punt of 37 yards by Crepinha and Guelph first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. And Rossetti with Fitzgibbon beside him. Rossetti is back to pass it. And he's gonna take a shot downfield and it's incomplete on the play. Yeah, not incomplete by very much. You know, he, Jed, Gard Jed Gardner, who is truly the best re receiver in this Guelph offense, had a good head of steam up there, a decent route. He got down there, he's just a little bit, the ball was thrown just a little bit too far, but Gardner was in, he caught that ball, he was on his way to the house. It's a good throw, just a little short. Step-by-step -step oh, coverage by Mario Capito. Another guy who's getting some reps too in the, you know, early in his career, Caputo, a bunch of guys that, you know, we talk about injuries and how they can really hurt somebody. The depth of Max shows, and it really helps to have these guys ready to go. Caputo gets in there and he's getting reps. That just makes these players that much better going down the road. You know, you got a freshman who's getting a bunch of reps. He becomes a second year player. He's almost playing at the level of a third year player because he's gotten more Time on the field, more reps and more experience. That pass intent, again was intended for Gardner. And it was well defended on well, the play. Gardner was running a crossing route. He just didn't get away from the backer who stuck out his hand and knocked the ball down. Trevor Gary was uh, on coverage. Evan Short, whose last punt was 32 yards. <laughs> this one is end over end by the left footer. And it's picked up by Robert Babick, and Babick turned to the right, went back to the left, and is down at the 50-yard line. So McMaster again with good field position, this time inside of Guelph territory. Excellent field position, and, and a great play by Babick. He saw that ball bounce. He ran up there real quick and secured it for his Marauders, and then looked for some space. Didn't see anything to the outside, came back up to the left. 35-yard punt by Short, five-yard return by Babick. Bad name for a punter, Short. <laughs> Short from Nelson High School in Burlington. Hand off again to Nemet, and Nemet has got lots of space, and he's down the sideline to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, 
and he is nope, shoved been. out of bounds at about the two yard line. Well, this is, this is pure Joe Nemeth. This is pure Joe Nemeth. He explodes to the point of attack and then throws in an extra burner and he's off to the races. Look at Nemeth, slips away from one tackler. Now he's using speed here to outrun these two guys to the corner, gets a block, and then it's a foot race to the goal line. He gets pushed out just inside the one. Maybe the two, maybe the two, might be the two and a half. But look at that, there's a great look at it, big hole. Nemeth fires it up inside, turns the corner, and now it's a foot race. 48 yards on the pickup for Joey Nemeth as he gets shoved out of bounds at the one yard line. So first and goal for McMaster. And the handoff again to Nemeth, and he's rewarded after his 48 yard run, and he takes it in from one yard out, and it's 13 nothing McMaster. 48 yard run by Nemeth, one yard scoring run. He's got two scores of four yards. And so McMaster has opened up with a 13 nothing lead with the extra point pending Don against a team that's only given up 16.2 points a game. Yeah, and, uh, and frankly, Steve, I'm surprised by the way McMaster's really been able to pretty much have their way with the Griffs this point of the game. Extra point by Capenia is up and it's good. And a short drive for McMaster in terms of number of plays. Two plays, 50 yards. Nemeth. Two touches on that drive. He got all the yards himself, as you can see him pile in for the touchdown. Now he gets the stat, but it's those big hogs up front pushing the Griffins off the line of scrimmage that accounts for that touchdown. You can see Matt Sewell, number 59, he was just on the left side of your picture, blowing guys up into the end zone. Christopher Picard was also involved on that play. So the number nine McMaster Marauders looking to make a march towards the playoffs and home field advantage or even a bye, though they have lost to both Ottawa and Western, the teams ahead of them, in good shape early in this game up on Guelph, 14-0. Having said that, it's kind of stunning the way U of T upset Ottawa last week, which speaks volumes towards the parity level that's gonna be achieved in the OUA very soon. A good driving kickoff by Stephen Dennis. Gardner with the return for the Guelph Griffins. Okay. Able to get to the 35 yard line. Well, great kick by Grappina and good job by the coverage team to get down there. One of the problems you have, Steve, when you kick it low like that is the ball travels downfield so fast, your cover team can't get down there and cover it. Mack did an excellent job limiting Guelph to their 30, just across their 30. 55 yard kick, 20 yard return. And Rossetti with a completion on the outside to Jed Gardner for a short pickup. Gardner is clearly the go-to guy in the Guelph offense. That's who Rossetti would be looking for more often than not. His last three pass attempts have gone to Gardner. At 15 catches and 228 yards coming into the game. He is Guelph's leading receiver. He's actually able to collect seven yards on that play. Second and three. Hand off to Fitzgibbon who tried to turn the corner on the outside and got pulled down basically right at the line of scrimmage. It was a good play, well, Roberto take, Felice was involved. Take a look at it here, and Fitzgibbon, that play is designed to go up the C gap, there's nothing there, so Fitz has to bounce that to the outside, and then he gets dragged down. Byron Metcalf was the initial man on the play for Guelph, so once again, Guelph will have to punt for a third time. Yep. Third punt for short, 33.5 <laughs> yard average. And it was almost blocked by McMaster and then oh, taken oh. to the outside and yeah. the momentum of number 83, Robert Babick, took him out of bounds, but it looked like Ventresca might have been the 
initial pressure and almost blocked that punt. Excellent effort, uh, though, by Babich to try to keep his feet in bounds and get something out of the return. No real harm done. Max got great field position at their 38. Ends up being a 35-yard punt with no return, so a pretty good net from Evan Short after he almost had that punt blocked. And Guelph's got to do a little bit better job on those special teams because if Mac came after that one, you know they're going to come after another one. Quinlan back to pass again, has lots of time. He's going to take a shot all the way down the field. Wide open is the Kochi. And it's a touchdown by McMaster. Well, and the big plays are just killing Guelph in the early going. A 72-yard pass. The super freshman just steps up and does it again, doesn't he? That ball looked when it was in the air to be overthrown. De Croce's got four or five gears, I think, that nobody knows about. He just stepped it up, ran underneath that ball, caught it clean, and then took it to the house. What an outstanding pass, run, root, catch, and yet another Mac touchdown. And there you take a look at De Croce. 72 yards, he beat Sebastian Howard, a fourth-year defensive back on that play. But, and he just flat out ran him. He just outran that guy to the end zone. That's all there was to it. With Krapagna ready to add the extra points, and who would have thought this, Don Edwards? 5.15 remaining in the first quarter, and it's 21-0 for McMaster. Yeah, you know what? I, I think I'll go home and watch this, how this one ends, because it's <laughs> exciting. But I, it, truthfully, Steve, there's no way. If you had told me this afternoon that with a little better than five minutes to play in the first quarter. Look, that ball looks overthrown. And look at the Croce take off for it. Had you told me this afternoon, if you called me at work and said, Don, this game's going to be one-sided before the first quarter's out, I would have told you you were crazy. But then there's a good look at Steph Potasic, who's got to be pleased with what he's seen so far. Hey, so, so 21 nothing this quick against a team that's a lot better football team than a lot of people thought they would be. And I will tell you, to your face, is a better team than being down 21-0 right now to the Griff, to the Mac Marauders. One play, 72 yards. And doing the kickoff for McMaster, Stephen Dennis. And it's another driving kick. Looks like that's Fitzgibbon back to take it. He's not going very far at all. 22-yard line, maybe before he's taken down, actually. It's number three, Anapolsky again. Oh. Anapolsky, excuse me. Number three for the Panthers is Spencer Edwards. But he's not going to be returning a kick <laughs> unless, you know, he's trying to block somebody and the ball hits him in the head. So, Coach Potasic was kind enough to give all my players tickets to tonight's game, so the Panthers are here enjoying the game. Instead of being at practice, I'm sure they're enjoying that a lot more. You know, they may pick up a few things, especially about offense, as Rossetti was going over the middle. What are you saying? You don't like my offense? Dylan Dimitrov. No, I get it, Clark. I get it. I like my <laughs> offense. It's fine. Well, if there's you the Panthers right there. There's a good look at the boys. And that see that one shoving food in his face? You'll yeah. never guess who his father is, number three there. <laughs> if, yeah. Last name Edwards, I yeah. believe, right? Yeah, look at him. Look at him. The mouth stops when he's asleep. The rest of the time, he's either talking or scarfing. Well, I'm not going to tell you, tell the fans how much money you gave him, but I bet, I bet he spent a good portion of it on hot dogs. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and apparently nachos. <laughs> Second down, Rossetti is again going to test the outside. What a great catch made. And they're going to call it incomplete, though, but a wonderful effort. Wow made by Kevin Campbell, the defended by Michael Daly, but he couldn't keep the feet down. Well, watch Campbell climb the ladder right here. That ball hangs in the air. It's way up there. He goes up, catches it, brings it down, and lands out of bounds. Now, he's got to land in bounds, or both feet got to be in bounds. That, neither of those things happen, so that's too bad because that was a great play for Guelph, and it would have been a bit of a momentum shifter. And Guelph, Don, early in, kind of forced out of the rhythm of their offense. They're a a ball control team. And a short booms a very good punt. That's a much better punt. That will force Babic all the way back and a very short return yeah. to the 36 yard line. Well, it's a much better punt and much better job by Guelph's cover team to get downfield, take the contain, limit any opportunity for a return. Much better job. 47 yard punt and a two yard return for Babic. It's we will go to the sidelines and check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Mike Fortune. Mike?